Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Stasia Bliss. We're talking Kundalini awakening, initiations, integration, embodiment, practices, states of mind, life force management. I am taking you through the tarot right now this summer. Uh, we're doing the major arcana of the tarot and how these archetypes relate to the awakening process. So welcome back. We are on the third card today. I do like a day or two in between. So if you missed the previous ones, just go back and find them in the channel. Um, I'm going to start putting them in their own folder. So today is the High Priestess. She's card number two. Remember, we always start with the zero, the fool in the tarot. The zero is the zero point. This one is a little different than the original tarot deck. So there's some similarities I'll point out. But the High Priestess is today's talk. She is the one who stands between the conscious and the subconscious and unconscious mind. She is representative of the divine feminine, the mystical, the initiation point. So we've talked about initiation in other videos. So that in the Kundalini awakening, of course, is initiating between various chakras, uh, different experiences you're having, then being kind of tested. We talked about that the other day, something coming back up. That's a high priestess moment when you are needing to rely on the information you have learned from spirit through your awakening. And now a situation arises that you must apply it. So that's being intuitive that's listening, that she's also the part of us that has to sometimes take time out, um, sit, meditate, create an altar, uh, do ritual, and so forth. So this is representative of sacred knowledge. Sacred knowledge. So in the journey of the tarot, um, it's interesting if you follow the cards on their journey. So. The fool was the risk taker, didn't really know what they were getting themselves into as often we are at the beginning phase of awakening, right? Don't really know what we're getting ourselves into, but we just sort of jump off the cliff or the universe just slams us with divine energy and suddenly we feel like the magician, like we have power to the universe, I am He-Man or whatever, like we feel the power. Right, And we recognize all elements are present. And now it's up to us to begin to create life um, with a new consciousness. So the high priestess is kind of taking that step back and recognizing also there's some subconscious mind that's been influencing us. We'll visit that again when the moon card arises. But as you can see, she does have the moon card here. Usually the high priestess is accompanied by two pillars. So she's got the two rock pillars in this one. They represent duality. So you must be able to acknowledge in your awakening the dual nature of this reality. And as one aspect, you know, there's duality and there's unity. You have to acknowledge the difference um, in order to be the high priestess. I personally really love Biddy Tarot's tarot book, so I brought that along today. Um, I'm not a fan necessarily of her deck of cards because it's just that's a little bit plain, but I like her book a lot. So I'm reading from her High Priestess. I want to share because I think this is beautiful. She says uh, in the traditional tarot, uh, the High Priestess sits in front of a thin veil decorated with pomegranates. Okay, so what comes to mind when you think of pomegranates? If you're familiar with the stories, you might think of Persephone and Hades and how he tricked her. He stole her down to the underworld and tricked her by feeding her pomegranates so that she has now eaten of the underworld. So now she had to return. So she has to return every six months. So it represents a knowledge. Pomegranates represent a knowledge of good and evil, or of light and dark, of upper world and underworld. You could equate that to the Garden of Eden and taking a bite out of the fruit and now gaining the knowledge of good and evil, okay? The High Priestess has gained the knowledge of duality. 
she can stand in the corridor between them, okay? Only the initiate may enter, okay? It says the veil represents um, a separation between conscious and subconscious, seen and unseen, serving to keep casual onlookers out. Only the initiate may enter, okay? So a high priestess is the initiate Maybe not the master, although we come back again and again to high priestess moments in our journey to initiate new knowledge. She reads in here, the high priestess wears a blue robe and she does in this card too. Um, symbol of divine knowledge and her status as divine ruler. She holds a scroll of the Torah usually, uh, signifying a greater law. Um, and it says, it is partially covered, signifying the sacred knowledge is both explicit and implicit. It will only be revealed when the student is ready to look beyond the material realm. So this is a theme again and again in our awakening process. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. So you can think you're ready all the while, but only when you actually are ready will information be presented to you. So High Priestess is signifying, even with the number two, the awareness of the different realms of duality, of unity, okay? And continuing to place the self in that initiate state of mind, knowing that you have never reached the ultimate. <laughs> There's always something beyond that. So it's good to not get super comfy in what you believe because Soon, as kundalini energy will teach you that energy too will have a tower moment which we haven't got to yet but that will also have the rug pulled out from under you but the high priestess starts to see themes in the awakening journey and starts to know how to walk through the initiations she knows what to wear she knows what attitude to have she knows what tools that she might need for this initiation and she becomes wiser as she goes through the process again and again or as you do or as I do um, if, if the high priestess is reversed okay if we're not listening if we're disconnected if we've withdrawn for too long in our awakening process. So there are initiations that require us to go within and to come away from people. We have to honor that or else we can look crazy out there, we can have negative interactions or we can get things attached to us, but we also have to know when it's time to return. Okay, so if we're not following that and we're withdrawn, we're secluded, we're silent when we should be you know, coming forth in the world. That's also something to look at. That's a stuck life force energy. And we need to open up those channels again. So, high priestess moments in life. If you think of one, if, as I'm talking, you're thinking of one, maybe write it below in the comments. Are you having a high priestess moment now? Or the better question might be, where in your life are you having a high priestess moment? So let me give you an example in my life. So I've been reading cards for probably three decades. <laughs> it's been something I was drawn to since the, um, the end of my teens. And um, so I was reading cards for a number of years and then I started to become aware of the runes. And maybe some of you have heard me tell this story if you've watched all my videos or a lot of my videos, but I started to be called to the runes, like I could actually hear the runes calling to me. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I wanna learn the runes too. So as soon as I decided and I accepted that initiation, all of my cards went silent. All my cards was silent. I couldn't read them for a year, for an entire year. I could only start to learn the runes I'm wearing a rune necklace today. This is to remind me to bring this up. These are all the runes, the Nordic runes. And I do have Nordic ancestry, so I was particularly drawn uh, to them. And I was on a trip to Ireland, and I was trying to collect like rocks from Ireland to carve my own runes. They all got taken at customs. <laughs> 
But anyway, so my first set of runes were wooden and um, I just worked with one each day and meditate on it and tried to see how it was showing up in my life and then I would do the next one and I found this great site runesecrets.com has some beautiful messages and I just started using them as my main source of divination because uh, none of my cards would talk to me and it was like having a bunch of your best friends don't talk to you anymore <laughs> because the cards have always talked to me um, but so that entire year was a high priestess moment that entire year was a high priestess moment. So um, there can be high priestess moments that are fleeting, that are shorter, and there can be some that are longer lasting. Maybe there's a whole era of your life that is a high priestess moment. That doesn't mean you can't have other archetypes playing out too. That's how multidimensional you are, but uh, it can be something you're being initiated in. Yeah, and because it was like spiritual matters of spirit, spiritual studies, this is a lot of what I've gone through in my life, a lot of different spiritual studies. And there was another time in my life when I was <laughs> had a high priestess moment with ayahuasca. And um, I wasn't planning on it. I had done some ayahuasca and it was fine. Some had been rather harrowing experiences and some I'd had to just help other people the whole time and really got pulled out of my journey but I was dating someone at the time, this was before my kids, um, who wanted to become an ayahuascaro and had invited this Peruvian shaman to our house where we often did have ceremony and to teach him and initiate him into this shamanic tradition. And at the last moment, literally, and I was you know, planning to move out, we'd actually broken up at the time and um, we were still friends, so we were kind of hanging out and taking care of some things, and I was packing some things, and he kind of chickened out at the end. He was like, I don't think I really want to do this. You know, he was emotional, and um, he didn't really want the relationship to be over, but I wasn't really planning on doing the plant medicine path. Like, I had done quite a bit of plant medicines with him, and I just didn't really know that it was for me. I was kind of starting on a yoga journey, and I'd been to yoga school and so forth, and um, Anyway, it turns out that he begged me to pick up the shaman at the airport, and I just had this knowing. I was like, you know, if I pick up the shaman, then I'm the student. Like, there's there's no backing out of it. Like this, and so I, I I knew the fates had aligned for me, and they were high priestessing me through another awakening journey, which was very intense. I did lots of medicine during that time, and sure enough, I was being initiated into another another big portion of my training um, so that was a probably four week period of my life and uh, was hugely initiatory very high priestess in nature in fact i kept going to one initiation after another because he'd come to town also because that's when all the major masters from different traditions were in town doing specific initiations. So I received all of those um, because I was there and that was part of my path, okay? So sometimes an initiation is a funeral or is a wedding or is a birth of a baby or is a rite of passage. Sometimes they are literal, you know, initiatory acts that are from mystery schools. We're gonna get into the Hierophant next that is more like structures and and is more what marriage and these institutions are high priestess is is representative more of the divine feminine the mystery schools um sacred knowledge that's not usually kept in structures not really taught to the populace so this is also things that you learn within yourself it could be dream time initiations that you're having also and you might go through a whole phase in your life, I know I did, where I had to really cultivate the High Priestess and there's lots of parts to that. It might be like following the cycles of the moon, following your emotional cycles, starting to work with crystals, working with different magical objects and so forth. And that can be part of the path too. Or it can just be getting to know your chakras, how your spiritual mechanics of the body work and so forth. That is all a High Priestess journey. So. 
I guess we'll leave it right there today. If you have any questions or you feel like I didn't touch on anything, please do let me know. I am noticing she does have runes in this dress. This is my Celtic tarot, so I'm not really surprised about that, though I didn't notice it till just now. Um, yeah, so thanks for joining. If you liked this video, please like, subscribe, share, and I um, hope to see you again. If you would like your own personal tarot reading or other reading, I do all readings by donation, or if you want to do some kind of empowerment session, clearing work and so forth, ancestral healing, um, body system check-in, body code, emotion code stuff, uh, please reach out to me for that as well. I'd love to support you. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. I'll see you next time. Namaste.